carnivore diet for IBS. Does it actually work? And how can you make sure you're getting the most out of it? In today's video, we're diving into all things carnivore diet for irritable bowel syndrome and how it compares to other diets you might be considering. We'll also discuss some common pitfalls and offer tips on how to track your progress along the way. Hi, I'm Dr. Trano Dossery, a surgeon dedicated to reducing inflammation caused by gut microbiome imbalances. I myself struggled with digestive dysfunction and autoimmune inflammation in my early 20s and successfully put together a methodology that works not only in me, but also my patients. My method is called the Mind-Gut Immunity Approach and has resulted in thousands of successes over the years. If you or someone you know struggles with IBS and wants to rid themselves of inflammation for good, check out our website, mgiclinic.com and schedule a discovery call with me. I'll walk you through some practical steps for IBS recovery and how you can achieve lasting success in just six weeks. Now let's dive in. Some studies back the carnivore diet for managing IBS, but there's also research showing the other side, with some even suggesting a link between the carnivore diet and development of IBS. So how do we sort through these conflicting views to figure out what actually works for IBS? As I mentioned in my other video entitled Ideal Diet for Irritable Bowel Syndrome, I'm a strong supporter of creating individual diet plans based on four important criteria. These criteria help me determine whether or not a diet will work for someone with IBS. And here's a quick recap of these four criteria. Number one is phytonutrients. Number two is macronutrient requirements. Number three is microbiome specificity. And number four is food sensitivity. If you're interested in more detail on each one of these, be sure to check out the Ideal Diet for IBS video, but I'll summarize them here also. Now let's break down how the carnivore diet stacks up to other diets like the phytonutrient diet I usually recommend for people with IBS. Just to review, you have bad bacteria and fungus in the intestines which process carbs, sugars, starches, and fiber leading to inflammation. When the harmful bacteria and funguses in your intestine digest carbs like sugar, starches, and fiber, it leads to bloating, gas, and inflammation. When we dig into why the carnivore diet sometimes helps for irritable bowel syndrome, it's because the diet removes carbohydrates from the equation entirely, diminishing the source of inflammation. The carnivore diet for IBS is based entirely on animal products with no fiber or carbohydrates and includes electrolytes to maintain balance. This diet eliminates all carbs including fiber, lactose, starches, and sugars. And unlike keto or low carb diets that might still include a small amount of carbs, the carnivore diet for IBS cuts them out completely, leaving no fuel for bad bacteria and funguses in the gut. Instead of feeding harmful bacteria, the carnivore diet bypasses the issue and supplies calories from fats and proteins. And this is why some people with irritable bowel syndrome use it as a short-term fix during flare-ups or when other diets haven't worked well. However, remember those four criteria I mentioned earlier? Let's look at how the carnivore diet holds up over time. Removing carbs doesn't address the root cause of gut dysbiosis. While it may help to alleviate symptoms temporarily, it's important to nurture healthy gut bacteria for long-term results. And we'll get into how you do that in just a moment. But let's start by talking about the first criteria, phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are micronutrients found in plant superfoods. These nutrients contain antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds that are beneficial for people with IBS, particularly when it comes to calming gut inflammation. Here's a 2023 study on the effect of polyphenols and minerals and fiber on IBS. And here's another one from 2022 discussing prebiotic fiber and its efficacy in treating IBS symptoms. Phytonutrients include categories like polyphenols, terpenes, thiocyanates, fiber, resistant starches, omega fats, and alkaloids. Phytonutrients are important for reducing inflammation starting with the gut, which is crucial for managing IBS. When it comes to the carnivore diet for IBS, it's clear that these phytonutrients are missing. But if you're interested in trying this diet out, you can still get phytonutrients by incorporating herbal teas, which won't add carbs, fiber, or sugar. There are also other diets that are similar to carnivore that do include phytonutrients. And these can include things like paleo, which when it was originally conceived, allowed a lot of vegetables. Keto, low carb, and Atkins diets also limit carbohydrates, but still allow for phytonutrients. With a strict carnivore diet though, you'll miss out on the benefits of phytonutrients for IBS-related inflammation. Next, let's look at macronutrient requirements. 
The carnivore diet for IBS does a good job in terms of meeting macronutrient needs. Macronutrients include things like carbohydrates, fats, and protein, and you can enter in your weight and height and activity into a calculator such as the one on my website to get an estimate of what your macronutrient requirements are. If you're following the carnivore diet for IBS, you'll obviously need to adjust these numbers by increasing the fat and protein while decreasing the carbs. In general, a diet that gets half of its calories from fat is normally a good thing. Although I don't particularly like saturated fats in meats which are associated with certain inflammatory processes. I also don't like the animal-based cholesterol in the meat which can allow for increases in arachidonic acid in the body. I describe both of these pathways of irritable bowel inflammation in my other videos on my channel. So if you need a refresher, feel free to take a look at those videos. When I design diets for clients, they're generally lower in carbs anyways, for obvious reasons. And most of the fats come from plant-based omega sources. So you don't have any of these problems. From a macronutrient perspective, the carnivore diet for IBS can meet your needs, but keep in mind the potential inflammatory risks that come with animal-based fats and cholesterol. Next, let's dive into microbiome specificity. Let's go back to the equation. Bad bacteria and fungus feed on carbs, which results in inflammation. The carnivore diet removes the carbs, but does it actually promote the growth of good bacteria? The answer to that is a clear no. Some people may argue this, especially on YouTube, where you'll find plenty of folks claiming that the gut microbiome diversity is actually improved with a carnivore diet. There are even Reddit discussions dedicated to this topic. But from a practical perspective, after reviewing hundreds, if not thousands of stool studies, I can tell you that I have never seen a healthy functional microbiome in someone following the carnivore diet with IBS. The very nature of IBS involves inflammation triggered by an imbalance of the gut microbiome. And this is why in our program, we start with patented probiotics from Japan to recalibrate the gut microbiome and push out harmful bacteria. But how do we promote the growth of this good bacteria? It's not by cutting out carbs. Instead, we select specific phytonutrients in the right ratios. And this is where the mind gut immunity method is very successful. We carefully designed the diet to promote the growth of beneficial bacteria, which lay down a competitive biofilm to crowd out the harmful bacteria and funguses. Over time, this allows the body to produce fewer pro-inflammatory markers like TNF-alpha and interleukin-6 as the good bacteria take over. The problem with the carnivore diet for IBS is that it ignores the root cause of the issue. You may stop feeding the bad bacteria temporarily, but as soon as you reintroduce carbs, fiber, and sugars, your symptoms flare up again. And I've seen this pattern play out time and time again. People fail the carnivore diet because it's simply not sustainable long term. When carbs are reintroduced, the symptoms return because the underlying gut microbiome dysfunction was never fixed. On the other hand, the Fido diet actually addresses the root microbiome issues associated with IBS. This means that long term, you have more flexibility with your diet you'll even be able to enjoy cheat meals without suffering any consequences. I typically teach my clients how to cheat on their diets by the second or third month of the program because by that time, we've mostly resolved the underlying gut issues in a lasting way. The carnivore diet may help this in the short term, especially during flare-ups, but it's not a good long-term strategy when compared to the customized phyto diets we use for IBS. Over the years, I've spoken to many people during discovery calls who have tried the carnivore diet for IBS, and the story is usually the same. They experience temporary relief, but as soon as they reintroduce carbs again, their symptoms returned. And this is something I hear very often. My hope is that this honest review of the carnivore diet for IBS helps you decide if it's the right option for you. While it may provide short-term relief, Long-term success will require addressing the gut microbiome if you want to rid yourself of IBS symptoms permanently. Now let's cover the final criteria, food sensitivities. Food sensitivities are often a major concern for people with IBS. In my other video, I cover the four primary food sensitivity tests that are available. The skin prick test, the IgE blood test, the IgG4 blood test, and the newer mediator release blood test. For a detailed breakdown of these tests, feel free to check out my other video on food sensitivity testing for IBS. When it comes to the carnivore diet, there's also the issue of complex proteins, which I've mentioned in my previous talks. You basically ingest large amounts of protein, which are broken down in the stomach and upper intestines by proteases. These proteases break down the protein into individual amino acids, which are then absorbed into the bloodstream. 
But sometimes these proteins do not completely break down and form small peptide chains, which can cause really bad inflammation. We see this in various types of complex proteins, especially ones that are animal derived. This means that there's probably a high likelihood of developing a sensitivity to one or more types of meats or even eggs. And this makes the carnivore diet a risky option for IBS as it severely limits your food choices and can trigger sensitivities. All right, that's my talk. In the comments below, tell me your experience with the carnivore diets and what has worked for you and what didn't. I'm curious to hear about your experiences. As you know, I've had great success using the mind gut immunity method in my IBS clients, and I'm a strong supporter of customized phyto diets for IBS and focused gut microbiome recalibration for our clients to achieve lasting success. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. As always, this is Dr. Chanu Dasri with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.